Folks, welcome back to Beard Business. We are back. This is Jake. This is John. And after too long of a hiatus, the show is back. And before we get into, we got some exciting stuff to talk about today, including a format change. Yes. Before we do that, I just wanted to take a minute to explain why we were away. So we had a lot of stuff going on over the past month. My dad passed away, which took a lot more time out of my schedule than I thought it was going to. You went on a trip. Mm -hmm. And we took some time to kind of rethink the format of this show. True. So we are back. We've got a lineup of a lot of really cool interviews we're going to be doing soon. And uh, I hope you guys are excited about the changes that we're making. We're excited. So let's talk about the show. So first of all, the people that are listening on the podcast, they can actually go watch all of our shows now on YouTube. Nice. So they should go to our YouTube channel. Exactly. Beer and Business. You can go to our website, www.beer.business, and there's a link right to it on the front. You can watch it there. You can subscribe. So you should watch us because then you can really see the shenanigans and you can see uh, Mr. Winnie's beautiful face. <laughs> and you should do it because it's free. And it is free. So We're also going to change the way that we do the show. So, you know, we're not going to release the show on Fridays anymore. We're going to release the shows as we record them. Whenever we want. Whenever we want. That means we might, like today, release the show on a Monday. Sometimes we may release the show two, three times a week, just depending on what we've got in terms yeah. of guests. Um, but we are going to release the show as we have content that comes up and as our schedules allow us to record. That's right. And we are also going to cover one topic <clears throat> on every show. So we're going to cover a topic today, which we'll get into. Um, and that topic could be an interview, so it could be a guest that we're bringing on to talk about something specific with them. Um, but every show is going to be one episode that we're going to drill into and uh, try to make sense of it. And Sounds gonna, good to me. And we're going to start every show with beer, which uh, this week we are drinking this little gem from Hidden Springs Ale Works in Florida. This is called Bear Lasers. So... Uh, Really it's crazy a, package on this thing. It's a bear with laser beams yes, coming out of his eyes. I brought this back from Florida, so we actually don't have access to this in Georgia. Um, but I was on a little road trip and decided that I'm not coming home empty-handed, so I got some IPAs. So this is a, uh, oh. a 6.7 IPA IP. with Citra, Simcoe, Mosaic hops. So. Simcoe and Mosaic. Sounds delicious. Sounds like we need to drink it. Oh. Mm. I smell the floral, piney. Oh, that's got a great nose on it. Yes, I smelled it. Nice and amber. Look at the color on that baby. Well, I think this is going to be uh, it's going to be a very enjoyable beverage. Cheers, mm. sir. Cheers. Oh, it's delicious. For Florida mm. peeps, wow. put your hands on this. Bear laser. That's, That's really, really good. good. It's got some chunks floating around in there. Some little uh, mildly filtered, little dead yeast, <laughs> little vitamin B. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I need some <clears throat> nutrients today. I haven't had my vitamins, so yeah. now I'm getting them. All right. So today's topic, Mr. Winnie. Yes. How about Google? Well, we're talking about streaming. Right. Google, Apple. So cutting the cord, right? Cutting the cord. So everybody's there's this there's been this huge you know wave of people cutting the cord from cable, Count me or in. satellite, which we both did. Mm -hmm. But there's all kinds of noise going on in video streaming, and it's it's leading to a lot of dissatisfaction, confusion, and I'm wondering when we're going to get to the point where people start cutting the cord from cutting the cord, <laughs> <laughs> cutting the cord from s streaming, right? From the cord cutting, right? It's crazy yeah, stuff. So we wanted to dissect this because there's a really interesting business side of this. There's a very mm -hmm. um, interesting popular culture phenomenon that's going on with, with streaming and cutting the cord. Mm -hmm. And i got to be honest, I'm confused. Sure. So I think the best place for us to start is to talk about what prompted us to have this topic on today. Mm -hmm. So last week, did you see that Apple made the announcement that they are finally... That's right. They had their big TV, Apple TV unveiling, plus. right? Yeah, yeah, big, yeah. Which they, you know, 
typical Apple fashion. It was done in front of an audience with a really slick presentation. A couple hours of fluff with oh, yeah. like 10 minutes of actual Smoke content. And and <laughs> <laughs> but here's yep. the thing that I, thought I found fascinating about this, okay? <clears throat> so, you know, this it's a really poorly kept rumor because Apple's been talking about getting into the TV game for a long time. Sure, yep. Well, Apple knew how broken the TV experience is. Sure. Oh, and yeah. so they had been talking about and making all these promises that this new Apple TV service that they were going to launch was going to revolutionize TV. Mm-hmm. So it was going to just kind of like the, they did with music in the iPod or they did with communication in the iPhone, they were promising the world. But what I saw last week seemed like a big old fat compromise. Absolutely. Because yeah. it didn't seem like anything different than what, you know, Amazon or, you know, Netflix or some of these other competitors are offering. So right. quick recap on what it was is they've got now they, they have hired some heavy now you're hitters, talking so get, about you're talking about the Apple TV plus yes the service right because the yeah. Apple TV device has been out for a while sure but they, they made some changes to that too yes they did yeah which right. I can't really remember what they were because they were so minimal but. yeah it's kind of it's going to be an aggregate for all like if you have a Netflix subscription and an Amazon prime and and all these different Hulu and it's supposed to be it's supposed to Bring it all into one app, basically, on your Apple device. <clears throat> kind of like the Fire Stick, the Chromecast, the Roku, right, but kind of you have to TVs. you kind of have to back out of it on my Roku and kind of go into different stuff. But I don't know. I was thoroughly confused. I just thought I could. Yeah. But that was a failure. Go ahead, Jake. Well, it, here's the thing. So they they're creating original content, right? So they, yes. Like they've got Jennifer Aniston on this show I can't remember what it was called Mm -hmm. they've got Oprah doing content for them exclusive to can't go wrong with Oprah right Um, and so (laughs) they're clearly investing in the content side of it Mm -hmm. Um, but then they're just going to have channels that you can stream like a lot of other services good so where's the revolution where's the innovation I'm not seeing it Right. Well, they haven't told you how much it's going to cost yet either. Yeah. So, so I think before we dig into what's going on in the in the streaming market, I thought it would be interesting for us to kind of go back and just dissect how we got here. What happened to TV and entertainment? What drove the dissatisfaction? Right. And then what should companies be looking for as we move forward? Sure. I can so, give you what I think. You you cut the cord. Why sure. did you cut the cord? Because I don't want to pay one hundred and twenty dollars a month for a thousand channels of content when I maybe watch ten. You know, we when my kids were little, we were just watching you know little kids shows, and maybe a movie channel once in a while. So we cut the cord. We got Netflix. They had a you know a ton of kids shows. Whatever Peppa Pig. You know, it's pretty popular now. I've watched way too much Peppa. So, <laughs> yeah, it was better to pay seven ninety nine a month, you know, on top of my uh, cable bill, my uh, internet bill, and then just do away with all the television altogether, really. And it's kind of, everything's kind of evolved from there, but there's, you know, it's Netflix, and then you got to pay for Amazon Prime, then you go, if you want to watch a Fox News on Hulu, you got to have that subscription, mm-hmm. you know, there's all kinds of it kind of adds up and it's i don't know it's very confusing well so you identified several problems so the first one is price sure you got you had it easy i was paying two hundred dollars a month wow well for maybe 10 channels that i was watching well yeah i just had the basic service you know plus the internet and it was i had satellite and i had dvr which every dvr that you had was like an extra fifteen dollars a month. I mean, it adds up so fast, mm-hmm. and it, you know, it's two hundred dollars a month I was paying for not a lot of stuff that I enjoyed. Yeah. So there's price. That that was one issue mm-hmm. that's that's driven this movement. The second one is content. So you you watched maybe ten channels. Same with me. Why? Because there's nothing on. There's no good content. Right. And th- and this is the part of the model that really got people upset. So you've got like, you know, NFL Sunday ticket. So mm-hmm. football fans, 
get to watch all these football games. Great. It's extra money. I don't yeah. Know. I mean, like why would I pay dollars a year or something extra? Yeah. Why would I pay that much when I if if I just want to watch the Bruins, you know, the Boston, like a hockey game? Yeah. The, the I don't care. I don't. Thing. I don't want to buy the entire NHL package. Center ice, I think, is what it's called. Yeah. For whatever. Yeah. I just want to watch the Bruins or the Penguins or the you know whatever. But you're gonna have to fork it out. Yeah. And then here's the other thing too. So you know, there's movies mm-hmm. on those packages that we had, crappy movies. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want the good stuff, you got to pay extra for Stars and HBO and Cinemax. And, right. Right. You know, again, it just—I mean—it adds up so fast, and you're spending all this money on. In you know, people are busy these days. So how much time did you really spend watching TV, or did your family really spend watching TV? My family did. I didn't. I was no. working. It's a bunch of crap. <laughs> But, you know, my point is, yeah. we don't spend a whole lot of time. Exactly. And so it's like, do you really need to spend that much money? So yeah. you've got price, you've got content, and then you've got customer experience, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've never heard somebody say, man, I had the greatest call with my cable provider today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They <clears throat> really, really took care of me, made me feel like part right. of the family. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know. And then here's the other thing. Which is not the, the, well, it is and it isn't the fault of the cable and the network and the dish providers. But the actual, the actual experience of watching TV. So you, you sit down in front of this device, and how many remotes do you have? True, depending if you get a home sound system or uh, whatever. Yeah, so mine was hooked into the audio receiver. So you got, you know, remote for the TV, remote for the receiver, mm-hmm. remote for the... The cable service, you know, I mean, it, and then. But I'll give it, I mean, they have come a long way because we got a uh, got a Roku stick, you mm-hmm. know, a few months ago. And that remote pretty much controls, it controls quite a bit. I'm impressed yeah, and, with the technology. There's been but it's not going to record, a, I mean, it's not going to control a giant receiver like this guy's got. Oh, my expensive. My $130 Best Buy special, is that <laughs> what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm balling dude yeah whatever (laughs) so you've got the actual fit i mean how many times did you play like tech support for your family you know oh tv's not working and daily exactly me too i would get calls i'm trying i'm trying to switch it over to dvd because the kids want to watch this and it's not working and it's like oh we'll press this and this Mm -hmm. it's not working and then i'd get home and it wasn't working and i'd have to start unplugging stuff and plugging it back in and reset reset yeah Unplug, wait 10 seconds. So the whole thing's broken. Agreed. So people start cutting the cord. You cut the cord, I cut the cord. And I think what really sparked this, arguably, I mean, there's prob- probably people will disagree because this is my opinion, but I think what really sparked it was Netflix. Sure. Because Netflix had a great product. Absolutely. I mean, a few, a few thousand movies and TV shows for seven ninety nine a month. Yeah. I mean, original content i think the the price has gone up i think what i pay now is oh, 10 10 12 bucks a month or something but but still if you go rent a dvd bowls. it's what two three four bucks whatever two three bucks rent a dvd red box isn't that still in business <laughs> just, anyway. yeah pretty exactly soon. i've never done it but i've heard of people that do <laughs> pretty soon we're going to be talking about dvds like we talk about vhs now right. like, oh remember the good old days uh, like we my, still watch dvds so i used to have an eight track player yeah, we've come a long way, haven't we? Mm. This beer's come a long way, too. This is a very good beer, just as a little segue. Yeah. Mm. Wow. If we haven't already said so, you should try to get And you don't have any more of this? It's the last two. Might have to make another drive down to Damn Florida. Damn you. Yeah, get some 10-10-10 and some of that. Yes. Yeah, 10-10-10 was amazing. All right. trip. Go ahead. So let's talk about streaming TV. So yes. streaming TV, you got Netflix, it really kind of kicked it off. But here are the players, and I had to write them down because there's so many. You got Netflix, you got Amazon Prime, Hulu, Fubo, Acorn, AT&T, DirecTV now. Why they need to, I have no idea. Right. Because DirecTV is owned by AT&T. You got Comcast, YouTube, Philo, PlayStation View, Sling. Do you want me to keep going? There's... There's hundreds. More. There's got to be hundreds. Oh, it's right? crazy. Every time, if you go and search on my little Roku, I mean, you can find 
everybody's got a streaming channel. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. So Netflix really kind of kicked this off, right? They mm-hmm. they came up with this this model, mm-hmm. which was delivering content over the internet, and it was delivered to a device. It could have been a DVD player, could have been a a media player, yeah. um, Fire Stick TV. Anything but Netflix smart. never came out with hardware. Sure. They just have the service. Brilliant. Brilliant. Really? I mean. It, it is. And then there's other services that don't have actual hardware, but then you've got these guys that have service and hardware. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, Amazon, they've got the Fire Stick TV, so they actually make the device, but they also have the service. Right. Yeah. But here's the problem, okay? So we're, we're getting into this, this world now where you've got all these choices. So which one's the right one? There isn't a, a right one right now for me anyway, because you have, there's not one place you can go where you can get all the content you want. Right. What would the perfect streaming service look like for Mr. Winnie? Perfect streaming would be one price and I can watch the few channels that I want to watch. One bill, right? And it would simple. And it wouldn't be a lot of money. Exactly. Right. If I want to watch History Channel, you know, I could pick it out, I don't know, a dollar a month or 50 cents or whatever. If I want to watch a certain news channel, mm-hmm. make that 50 cents or, you know, a la carte. A la carte. A la carte. A la carte. Here, here's the issue with the whole, the whole thing, the whole model. Go for so you've it. got content providers. These are the people that actually make the films, make the stuff that you consume. Right. And then you've got channels. Like you've got History Channel. Sure. You know, you just mentioned them. So they may not make the content, but then they own it. So they buy it. So they're under contract. Yeah, they have a, make a lot of their own content or whatever. But yeah, go ahead. Then there's the distribution. And the distribution is how it gets to you, ultimately, the consumer. There's right. a lot of mouths to feed across that, sure. that consumer distribution network. And here's the issue. It's not needed. Agreed. So we talk about these, you know, what's the perfect streaming service? And there's a lot of them out there. So, you know, I'm just going to take YouTube as an example. YouTube's got a really, really cool um, original piece of content, Cobra Kai. So it was, a, it was kind of a continuation of um, Karate Kid, like, you know, 30 years later or whatever. Right. An old Ralph. Ralph Macchio's Macchio. in it. And then, um, oh gosh, what's the uh, Cobra Kai Dojo master's the name? The blonde kid. The, no, the old guy. He's in it. Oh, that guy? Yeah. yeah. Um, totally drawn a blank on his name. Mm-hmm. He was in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Reese? Does that sound right? John Reese. Know. We'll have to fact wow. check that. Oh, yeah. I could be totally that's wrong. Good. I mean, you're good if you came that because I had I couldn't pull that but they're all in it it's it's and I mean it's gotten really really good reviews but to watch it you gotta have a YouTube TV service which is kind of like cable it's a package with a bunch of channels in it Mm. and it's forty fifty dollars a month now it is cheaper than getting cable or getting you know satellite service and it's just delivered over the internet but I think the whole point is there's there's still this distribution in Companies want to make money on that distribution. Mm -hmm. And they're protecting a lot of deals that are done with the content owners. And I think eventually this this really isn't going to get to where people are truly enjoying the service until they can go straight to the content creator or straight to the content owner, whoever invests in it. So I want to go directly to History Channel and just have a subscription with them. And be done with it, and have them charge me whatever you know, two bucks a month, three months a month. I think we're we're really at the infancy of this evolution. I mean, because oh yes, because there's no way that one content provider, one or, or you know Netflix with its original series or whatever, there's no one company that's gonna satisfy everybody. You know, mm-hmm. so that's one of the things I really appreciated about Netflix too mm-hmm. is they haven't tried to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean they just they pull in movie content, they pull in, you know, T V series and stuff, but they're not trying to do this whole channel deal. 
it's you know 10 bucks 12 bucks a month whatever um, their pricing is based on how many contiguous streams you want to have at one time mm -hmm. so if you want to have three people watching three different streams of netflix at once then you get that package but it's cheap yeah sure and that's what pisses me off about amazon is because you can watch the prime movies and stuff like that but they have a lot of content that you have to pay extra for oh and, and it's such an awful search experience so you'll yeah. search for something and it's like i want to watch jurassic park so you search and then you have to go into each one oh that one i got to pay for oh that one i got to pay for. right and it takes you, forever to you figure can out sort what it out but it's, it's a pain in the neck if yeah. you have the Fire Stick TV, which I don't, do you no, have? No, no. So on the Fire Stick TV, which is their product, oh, it's it's mm. not good. It's it's really, really difficult. Hey, yeah, Netflix is. They've upgraded their. Anytime if you scroll through their movies, it's like if you if you leave it on one movie for more than like one or two seconds, it automatically starts, starts playing. Starts playing a, a preview or whatever. Yeah, like the trailer, or if it doesn't right. have a trailer, it'll just start playing. Yeah, clips and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. But it is cool. But I and, – and so I think Netflix is kind of in the model where I think things are going – like that's where it started, and I think it's going to evolve back to that. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing that's really disruptive to this industry. They are – so this whole mega industry, they view it as though they're competing against each other. So who's going to get the sure. dollars for you getting channels? But you know what the real competition is? Things like beer and business. Because now there's yes. a <laughs> yes, your business baby, you know CBS, watch out, we're yeah. coming for you. CNN ain't got nothing. <laughs> but you've got all these people that are able to make original content mm -hmm. and deliver it instantly around the world. Sure, it, it's just an amazing time we live in, mm -hmm. and so I, what people want is they don't want any friction between content creator and me as a consumer. Yep, you know, and there shouldn't be. And allow us to monetize that how we want, you know. So, f for example, our show we don't charge anybody. Right. I don't know that they'd pay. To be honest, I wouldn't pay to watch me. We certainly haven't made anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of original content. I watch a lot of original content. You know, mm -hmm. straight off YouTube or straight sure. off of yeah. you know the app that those um, those organizations have created because it's really great content, and I'd right. rather watch that than cable news or you know, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. So now they've got this, they're competing for people's time. You know, if you're going to enter, if, if you're going to be in the entertainment industry, you have to understand that people are not entertained differently. Right. And especially with the younger generation, which is not us. True. Sorry, Mr. Winnie. <coughs> I'm old. Yes, On my are. back. Yes. All right, go ahead. Threw your back out just thinking. Yep. Um, but with... <laughs> <laughs> the younger generation, I mean, th they watch sports on their phones, right. which I can't do. I can't sit they in my watch house. everything on their phones. Yeah. So now you're com not only are you competing against other forms of video content, mm -hmm. you're also competing against apps in social media because you're trying to get that person's attention. You're trying to entertain them while right. all this other you know stimulus is coming at them. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is a... While cord cutting has become this really, you know, it's a big trend. It's gained a lot of momentum, a lot of steam. I think right now the market's really broken. I think it's way too complicated. And I don't think companies have yet hit the mark on what consumers are looking for. Agreed. I, th I just think there's, there's so much room for, you know, products like ours, the small. Yeah. To to get out there. I think the, the competition is going to move further and further away from Emmys and Grammys, you know, well, it shows viewers, the numbers. it's going to go more towards numbers. It's going to be the numbers and advertising dollars. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I know, I, I know I've definitely fallen away from Hollywood and mm -hmm. all the huge, <clears throat> conglomerate produced TV series and movies and stuff like that so I'm definitely I like I mean Game of Thrones wasn't that uh, was that Netflix HBO I think HBO, right? HBO was it oh, never watched it fail but you can catch it on streaming services not and not HBO you can catch it on uh, well YouTube and stuff like that <laughs> pirated 
Pirated. Th- hey. There's a lot of pirated content out there. Capitalism, baby. Yeah. Or, you know, criminal activity. I mean, whatever. Well, if it gets through, it gets through. <laughs> I don't endorse any of that activity. Me neither. Hmm. Never watched anything pirated. Hmm. Um, so getting back to what started this, this whole topic, <sighs> Apple. So they, come, they had talked about revolutionizing the experience for consumers. Right. And we haven't seen pricing yet, but they gave us a little glimpse of what this service is going to be. If, if you want more info on it, go to Apple's website. doesn't really have much on it right now, but you can watch the keynote, mm-hmm. um, which does give you more information. But I think that they fell way short of what their, you know, the their grand vision was. Yeah. And I think we need to go back as, as Apple and other companies are trying to figure, because this is going to get really disruptive. And as you said, the, the market that we see now is going to be radically different in, uh, just a few years from now. Sure. As companies are trying to s- fight and claw and scratch and figure out how to you know, be a player in this market. Mm-hmm. And I think they need to go back to fixing those four things that we talked about. Price. It's mm-hmm. got to be, I don't want to pay $50. I mean, right now there's a lot of streaming services that are in that 40 to $50 range. As a consumer, I don't want to pay 40 to $50 for something that I'm going to watch this much. Exactly. Yeah. I'd rather go, I'd rather zero in on that one piece of content. Like, you know, I like Formula One racing. I would rather just pay to watch that. Exactly. And maybe a few other things that I'm interested in. Instead, of, ha- I- instead of having a, a car payment, basically, for <laughs> a thousand channels that you only watch a couple. Mm-hmm. It's just a waste of money. Because honestly, like in original content, okay, so let's let's talk about that. So mm-hmm. when it comes to pricing, I pay the $12 a month or whatever it is for Netflix because I see value in it because there's a lot of content on there that sure. we do consume. Mm-hmm. They've got some, I mean, Narcos, great series. I don't, I don't know if you watch it. I haven't seen it. Awesome. Um, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good movies, a lot of good series. I see value in that. Mm-hmm. I would pay for YouTube TV as well, just to watch Cobra Kai. But I don't want to pay $50 a month no. just to watch the one series. I wouldn't and then $50 have a month to Google. <laughs> How much do Damn you... Damn Google. They're helping China for crying and out loud. what kind of phone do you have? Anyways. <laughs> I know I want to give them money, but I'll give them access to every part of my life. I need an iPhone. <laughs> um, but getting back to my point, it. when it comes to pricing, I would pay for the content and the content only. I don't want to have to be forced into a package with a bunch of channels that I'm not going to watch. Right. So you got to fix the pricing. you got to fix the content. You know, mm-hmm. So very related, but I don't want to – I mean, look, here's the other thing too. Even Netflix has some bad content. Right, but they deliver a lot of good stuff, so I don't mind right, paying. Of course, yeah. But YouTube, we're just talking about them. I don't know what kind of original content they have outside of that Cobra Kai series that I'd be interested in watching. Right. So if you're going to charge me, you better have good content because that's really what what has driven a lot of this dissatisfaction in the first place. Sure. Um, Got to have good customer service. Yeah. Don't I mean, make it. Don't make it hard to sign up. Don't make it hard to cancel. Just be pro consumer. Make people want to come to it because this is a whole thing with with cable and with wireless service and all this stuff over the years. It's been about contracts, locking people in. Mm-hmm. You've only got one or two choices, and you, people have it because well, it's either that or nothing. Well, you know right. what? Now we've got choices, and we don't have to watch what's coming through, you know, cable. What's coming through these packages from Hulu and all the others. Right. We don't have to watch it. We can go watch something else. We can go watch something for free. So you better deliver a great customer experience. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I think the, the big one, is if a company can figure out how to make the, the technology experience, the, the TV bringing all these you know different pieces of technology together, surround sound systems, all that, if the company figures out how to simplify that, and do it cost effectively is going to win big. It's not far away. I mean, it really is. We haven't seen it yet, and you'd think that. Honestly, I'm surprised somebody it's hasn't good. fixed it yet with all the 
I mean, we've got supercomputers in our pockets. It's incremental. I mean, really. I mean, you have, there's no one company that makes, you know, an incredible surround sound theater system for your home and then also makes a streaming device. But here's the thing. Everybody's trying to protect their ecosystem, you know? Sure, sure. So like the smart TV manufacturer wants to keep you in the smart TV menu, you yeah. know? I mean, years ago, I, brought a, I bought a DVD player years ago. It was a great DVD player, but it also had a, it was smart. But the streaming part of it was horrific. <laughs> yeah. Great DVD player, horrific. You know, same thing with the old, the smart TVs. I mean, they don't keep up with, you know, the Roku's and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's getting there. It's very incremental, but I believe it's getting there. But I do think the company that figures that out is going to win big. We should start a company to but figure it out. But we don't know anything about creating software. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. We do drink beer, though. Free beer with when every... When you're drinking beer, the sky's the limit. Free beer with every subscription? May not ever make money. That's how the Catholic but... Church got started. <laughs> free beer at every Mass. So we, uh, we've we probably confused Speaking everybody that, tremendously, haven't we? I'm... <clears throat> Probably more confused than we were when we started. Well, I think that what we've done today, Definitely we've more. identified a real issue. We've Absolutely. Identified, and where there's an issue, there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, Larry Page, if you're listening, like, dude. I just gave you the heads up, bro. Or, um, you know, Tim Apple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't say Tim Apple. Didn't say it. <laughs> didn't do it. <laughs> Oh. The opportunity is there. It's wide it open. Like and like I said, it's everything's in its infancy right now, as far as that goes. So oh. it's really it's oh. it's an exciting time. I think it, it is, but it's amazing to me how something as positive as cord cutting these options has turned into a nightmarish, <laughs> right? You know, really confusing marketplace. And you know, I like it. I like adversity. I like I like to see. I like to see evolution. I like to see it's competition, fantastic. which we have now. Right. But I feel like, again, I feel like these companies are really focused on protecting their ecosystems, trying to be, you know, market share winners. And they're not, they're not thinking about the consumer enough. Right. I mean, I look back at, you know, when my parents were my age and they could sit back and watch, you know, the 13 channels <laughs> that were on TV and, uh, have a beer, and uh, I just look at where we are now, and I'm thinking the beer is better, and the beer is definitely better, and you know the content selection is better, and I'm saying let's enjoy the beer, and sit back and just let it happen. Well, let the, let the, let every because everything is improving, it really exponentially year over year. So I'm really kind of happy right now. Of course, I've had a couple beers, so that makes me happy. But well, upon ahead. those wise words of Mr. Winnie, <laughs> I think there you have it. There you go. All right. So, what are we up to? So we um, we drink good beer, we enjoy our content, yeah. and uh, life is great. You can't get depressed. No, that's what I'm saying. Well, folks, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell to notify you when new it's episodes. It's free. Come out. Seriously, it's free. Yeah, I mean, come on, people, really. Like, I'm not asking you for anything other than just Yeah, watch. you could see this face every week for free. <laughs> well, you had to throw that in there. I thought we were getting close to closing the deal. And Come on, man. <laughs> just <I'm> trying. <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm ready to go. And if you're watching and you haven't listened to the podcast, just find us on your favorite podcast podcast app. But we have way more people listening to the podcast than are following us on Facebook or watching us on YouTube. So Good. for those of you out there in podcast world, check out our videos, follow us on Facebook. We have a lot of fun. We will have unique content online. So we'll have unique video content, including beer reviews that you won't be able to hear on the podcast. So you've got to watch the videos. Totally free. Lots of fun. Remember, always be safe. Don't drink and drive. Never. Don't be a hooligan, idiot, whatever. Right. Don't, don't be that. You know, we have Uber. With all this technology, we have Uber. Uber is the greatest. So, 
you know, have a few beverages and Uber home. That's okay? right. Don't be a jerk. See you next time. See you.